You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Wheat. I'm your other host, Jimmy Wong. Today we continue to discuss Modern Horizons 3. With MDFCs. It kind of rhymes. Yeah, today we're talking about, so the the new modal spells, the spells on the front, lands on the back, when they came out in Zendikar Rising, yep. they were hugely popular and are still staples today, and MH3 has 20 new ones. Yay. More busted than the ones from Zendikar Rising. Get ready to sleeve and unsleeve these cards a bunch, <laughs> and, then, and then you have to say, this is my modal dual-faced card every single time you do it, so people understand how... Uh, not complicated of a name it is. <laughs> yeah. But there's definitely some spicy bangers in here. And if yeah. you play Balaged Recovery or Valakut Awakening, you will be interested because yeah. these are also cards that do similar and, or better things. <laughs> If you want to pick up any of the singles that we're going to be discussing in this episode, go to cardkingdom.com slash command. Card Kingdom has a huge selection of singles and sealed products. They're going to have everything that you're looking for for Modern Horizons 3, especially these cards that you know you're going to play a lot of. you got to go and buy them all in one place. It's nice when you can add a ton of cards to your cart and you only have to track one package through the mail. Card Kingdom has a huge amount of professionalism, and they have a huge selection of cards. Yay. So when you're picking up a ton of cards for Modern Horizons 3, like I will be, you can get them in one place, shipped to you safely and soundly, professionally, by people professionally. who know what they're doing. Again, you can support the show and pick up some sweet new cards that are going into a ton of different decks at cardkingdom.com slash command. Yeah, I'm the guy that goes and clicks eight Balagad Recoveries. Yeah. <laughs> because every green deck I play will have them, and there's guaranteed at least two of those in this episode today. And once you get those cards, you got to sleeve them up, put them in your binders. Go to ultrapro.com slash command. UltraPro has a brand new line of products called the Mana 8, and I'm so sad that these didn't exist when I started doing my binder collection. They're perfect for your binder collection. They have the mana symbols on them, and they're a beautiful white color, so they're not like these... Because if I look in the corner of my room, and I just, I just see a rainbow of color, which, by the way, I love. <laughs> but I also see just a ton of black, plain, like black, 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 and it's like... <laughs> I, I grew up wearing black t-shirts. I play Magic the Gathering. <laughs> I, could, I could add some white coloring to my life. And this is a beautiful product that has all of the mana symbols printed super beautifully on all sorts of different products, basically. Then, yeah. And they also have shared this theming. So if this is something that you're interested in doing, you're like, hey, you know what? I want a white staples binder. Yeah. This is it. I want, a pl I want a deck box for this deck that represents this color. This is a great chance to get in on that. UltraPro.com slash command yeah. is the way to do it. Uh, UltraPro always coming out with cool new products. There's some Apex sleeves in here too, right? Yep. There's Apex sleeves, one of each color. So good. Um, if it, like, I build a lot of monocolors. I like when I build monocolor to have a blue box that goes with the blue sleeves for my blue deck. so you know deck. looking across the room what Which is. deck is which? <laughs> uh, and these are perfect for that. Plus, yeah. uh, the white play mats are super sharp, but you can bring them to a Magicon and get them drawn on by artists. Whoa. And customize them as you go and that's pretty fun as well yeah or just signatures so great yeah. opportunity to get some new product from ultra pro we i really like this line i'm definitely gonna be doing some stuff for my model color decks because mm. I've, I've started to trend into rachel weeks they're fun yeah yeah they're fun ultrapro.com slash command and the last way to support the show is directly at patreon.com slash command zone there you can check out episodes of Extra Turns and Game Nights a day early without all of those bothersome, nuisance-filled ads that we make. Ugh, gross. <laughs> they're so fun and Someone's made with like, care for you. They're like, I'm going to go type the time code right now so they don't hear Jimmy talking. Wait a minute, he's actually talking. What? I don't get it. Uh, you can also talk to us on Discord and get our real versions there. Rachel, myself, Josh, and a bunch of our uh, Command Zone members are there as well. Sometimes like Kyle Hill pops in. Yeah. And we have, you know, Ashlyn and stuff is in there as well. So you can always ask questions to them in that Discord channel and meet our incredible Command community there of mm. so many f passionate uh, like-minded magic players that can help you out with deck building rules what you name it mm -hmm. uh, patreon.com slash command zone we also shout out one lucky patron every single week and so this week's episode is dedicated, dedicated to, to Stuart Hodge Stuart you rock you rock thanks for supporting us Let's get into it. Today we are ranking the modal double-faced cards from MH3. Uh, so those are the MDFCs. MDFC, of course, stands for cards that you can either play on their front or play on their back. Specifically, the ones that we're talking about today are spells on the front, 
lands on the back. Yeah, and if you're like me, you love a reason to lower your land count. <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit, actually, maybe why you shouldn't do that. Uh, now, if you want to know all about MDFC lands, there is a lot of rules around it. Does it count as a spell? Does it count as a land in your deck? How does that work? Can you play them from your graveyard? As a land, if it says this and then that, well, all those rules and tricks are going to be covered in a prior episode of your uh, ours, kind of yours, episode <laughs> 352. Yeah, that came out around Zendikar Rising. I was going to include a lot of them in this episode, and then I was like, wait a minute. Is, this is all like perfectly packaged for you already. Yeah. Uh, so go check out that episode if you're new to MDFCs. Yep, uh, but it's a new generation of these spell lands. They are very powerful, just off the bat. If you are building a deck and you put this in there, your deck is not going to be worse for it in almost every single case. Yeah, it's wild. Um the MDFCs that we that were made in uh, Zendikar Rising, yeah, most of them were tapped single color lands. Mm-hmm. So they came in, they came like Baligad Recovery is a tapped green land on its backside. No option to play it untapped. They, that has yeah. changed. They so they printed, I believe it was third, no, 40, 30 MDFCs. Originally. I have it written down somewhere in a uh, in Zendikar Rising, but they made five mythic rare MDFCs, which were a spell in the front and a land on the back that comes in untapped if you pay 3 life. And those are the only ones that do that. Just the mythic ones. Yes. Yeah. That has changed. <laughs> there are uh, a lot more this time around. Yes. In Modern Horizons 3, there are 10 new MDFCs that can come in untapped if you pay three life. Uh, there's five permanent spells. There's five non-permanent spells, one in each color. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's another 10 that are introduced that actually are dual lands on the back. Yes. One in each color pair. Wow. So that's extremely powerful as well. However, those do not allow you to have them come in tapped, which isn't as massive a downside. There are We already play a lot of tap lands in Commander and Magic mm-hmm. in general. Yeah. Uh, so I, a, a big change here. Obviously, that mythic consideration has been dropped all the way down to uncommon. All uh, 20 of these MDFCs are at uncommon. Yeah. And you'll be seeing a stuff. lot of them uh, because of that. Uh, and even in Draft and Sealed, for those of you that are into it, Modern Horizons 3 is filled with them. They're very powerful. I'm so excited. So, Rachel, are they lands or are they spells? That's always the big question when it comes to MDFCs, because we say that you're supposed to have a certain amount of lands in your deck. Uh, we're like, I usually start around 38. I tend to be on the high side of things. Mm-hmm. I'll go all the way up to 40 if I'm not running a ton of ramp uh, or not running a ton of card draw. Uh, these I count fully as lands. Okay. Because if they're in my hand and I don't have another land, I'm definitely going to play it as a land. Right. And if it's the beginning of the game, you might be playing it earlier turns because mm. you can't tap it for mana quite yet. And it's okay that it'll come in tapped or whatever. Or you don't want to take the damage from it, right? Yeah. I, I think if there's an MDFC that you wouldn't play as a land to preserve the spell. Right. Like the spell is like a Valakut Awakening. It's, it's just so, so important. powerful. You're a wheel deck. deck. You have to have it. Yeah. Then I would count it as a, I would count it as a spell. Right. But um, even then, it also still kind of counts as a land. It's still kind of a land. Because if it's the only card in your hand that's a land, are you going to play that as your land for turn? You should. probably should. Well, Valkyrie Awakening actually is funny because that could also dig you for more land. Yeah, that's the closest one that I would consider more of a spell than yeah. a land. But even Valkyrie Recovery, I'm slamming it as a land if I don't have another uh, land in my hand. This kind of goes the same actually for cards like Basaju and mm-hmm. the channel lands. Uh, you know, when you play out a channel land just for the land ability, you often think, oh no, I'm wasting a spell. Well, it's actually a land as well in your deck. So you kind of get to make that judgment call a lot when it comes to MDFCs, but I think if it's in your hand and you would play it as a land, then it's a land. If it's mm. a card that you will never, ever play on the land side, then don't count as a land. Yeah, I I think the primary consideration here is just how many ta- of these you're running and how many tapped lands are you running in your deck. So I would count them fully as lands, but you have to understand that these are lands, lands with downside, which you can't run like 15 of these in a deck without yeah, yeah. really feeling the tempo hit of them. You don't play all of them. Yeah. All the, all the ones that match in your colors. And there's going to be even more now. Yeah, so. I tend to run what? Like, right now I run one to three in my deck. Yeah, I would say it's about the same for me. If, it, yeah. if it's green, Balagate Recovery is in there. If it's red, Valakut Awakening's in there. Yeah, Malachar Rebirth is one I Mal- play a lot Yeah, yeah, well. that one's very good as well. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, a, a question that, or something that we were talking about in the office that I think is really good with the channel uh-huh. lands with more MDFCs bounce lands are going up in terms yes. of uh, utility because they can return a spell to your hand 
or a it, land here or that a land acts as a that spell. is a spell. So yeah, if totally. you have channel lands in your deck, if you have uh, multiple MDFCs in your deck, you could consider putting bounce lands in your deck as well because they'll pick that land that could be a spell later back into your hand, basically draw you a card. Yeah, and notably, those also are tempo hits. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you play them in a certain order and not enough spells, you actually end up discarding in the early game as well. So just understand, and that's, by the way, you might want to discard, so it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But just understand that there are tempo hits. Those bounce lands do not enter untapped. Uh, ever, I think. I know. So Unless you have like a, a way to untap them. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All um, right. The next thing I wanted to talk about before we get into ranking specifically is card evaluation for these spells. Right. So you're not going to look at MDFCs the same way you would normal cards in the set. Right. Because their downside is so small that it's okay if they're a little overcosted. It's okay mm -hmm. if they're a little narrow. Where a lot of these spells we would look at and be like, I would never put this in my deck if it was just the front just side. Just the front side, totally. Because it's a land on the other side you have more, you're more lenient about what kind of slots it can take up. Yeah, and you're not hurting so bad as well because a lot of times I've had an MDFC replace a real card in my deck. Yeah. Because I'm like, I actually don't need to have this regrowth on top of this Balligate Recovery. I'm fine with just one. Right. Great, that opens up a spot later out on as well. So there's extra utility. And if it's, it's weird, it scales in this inverse way where if it's more useful, then it's easier to cut other cards in your deck. If it's mm -hmm. less useful, it's not as easy. I guess it's not inverse, but... You get what I'm saying. <laughs> I think there's a lot of questions that you can ask yourself when you're considering these cards for your deck. Yeah. And the first one is just, does my deck want this kind of effect? Mm -hmm. Like, am I running a lot of regrowth? Is a regrowth extra good in my deck? Do I want, um, like, a protection spell, like Malakir, Malakir Rebirth? Yeah, yeah. If you're not a heavy, heavy creature deck, then you probably don't want that spell. Mm -hmm. So you do still inherently want the effect on the spell. Yeah, we're going to talk about a couple that are like fight spells, basically. Yeah. Does uh, your deck want a fight spell? If you're a storm deck, that is not a great card to have in your deck. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, you said this earlier, but how many tap lands can your deck actually support? If mm. your deck is all tap lands, you're essentially telling the whole world and the table that I'm going to be one turn basically behind everyone else as a result of the fact that my lands are always entering tapped. Right. If you're a deck that's trying to curve out, if you're an aggressive deck that wants to play something on one and then on two and then get your commander out on three, then tap lands are a much bigger consideration than if you're a deck that's a little bit slower and sits back mm -hmm. and tries to generate value in the mid game. There's also a lot of decks that need exactly the amount of mana and spend every single bit of it every turn. Tap lands can really hurt with that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, um, the next question is, how many basics does your deck actually need? Are you running Cultivates and Kodamas Reaches? Are you leaning on basics for some other functionality of your deck? Because the more basics you replace, the less those cards work. Yeah. A great example is Mono White. There's a ton of cards like Amiria Angel that mm -hmm. care about how many planes you have in the battlefield. Yeah. And you would think, oh, Slam Dunk in any deck that's a white Mono White deck. And it's like, actually, no, nah, if you're running a lot of non-basics, it hurts that ability quite a bit. Yeah. You need to be aware of the cascading effects of removing cards of a certain type, like planes or swamps, if you're running like uh, Urborgs. Yeah, Urborg, Cabal Coffers. Or totally. yeah, that package. There are consequences to replacing basics. Yep. So be aware of the consequences and how much you need to consider them when you're replacing those lands. Yeah, but I would say in general, the more colors you have, the easier these are to put in because then your mana base becomes naturally more complicated. Unless, again, you're heavy green, you want to be cultivating, you want to mm. be far-seeking. Uh, and then how much of a cost is paying three life? Are you a deck that's trying to sit back? Or are you using your life total for other reasons? If you're bolting in a ton of these lands to have them yeah, come in on tap. Yeah, you're at 27 all of a sudden. How dead are you yeah, now? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> that is very, very, very relevant because there are a lot of cards. We always say life is a resource, but that has its limit as well. And if you're a deck that doesn't have also life gain, then like, for instance, all my food decks, I'm like, I love any of these cards because oh, yeah. my food decks are just reversing the it's like anti-aging effects or something <laughs> but if your deck is already doing a lot of things that do damage to yourself like black necropones type stuff then these can actually be very risky and leave you within just straight one shot range a lot of times out of nowhere yeah so you if you're putting up a ton of these in there have that in mind as well yeah um one more consequence that I was thinking about recently is in, I was like, I'm going to put every single creature that has a land on the back into my mm -hmm. CDC deck because creatures are so much better than any other permanent in the right. deck that makes me zombies. But I'm also running Aftermath Analyst, which returns all lands from ah. my graveyard to the battlefield. And the more lands I eliminate from the deck, the less that analyst ability does. Right. So... 
does that mean that I'm not going to replace any of them? No, but mm-hmm. it does mean I'm going to consider how many I cut or how impactful that uh, analyst is in my deck down the line. Yeah, and there's some decks that run multiple versions of that analyst effect right. as well. Mm-hmm. So World Tide something, World Shaper. Yeah, World Shaper is the merfolk, and then there's, of course, uh, Yeah, and also, like, if you are the... If you're the dredge deck, if you're the deck that has Crucible of Worlds in it, mm-hmm. you're also going to probably change your consideration of how valuable these are. So that's why it really kind of goes back to that initial question of like, mm-hmm. how badly does your deck want this effect? Yeah. Does it make it really good? Then there's a lot more considerations and easy things to cut or adjust to based on that. Crucible is actually pretty sweet with a lot of these spell ones because you can cast the spell and then play the land from your graveyard. Yeah. But if you want to learn about those rules interactions, go. Check out the other episode. Episode 352. <laughs> After you finish this one, because it's time to give the tier list everyone's favorite internet thing we're doing it we're ranking yeah uh, we wanted to say give some stipulation for what each of these rankings mean so you have an idea of how we're thinking about these rankings yeah so this goes in the I call it like the the, the dancing game rankings so you ever played DDR yeah Sabtkadif where <laughs> S is actually the best yeah A we've been lied to A is the best in academic terms but mm-hmm. not in gaming terms yes so S is a staple or S is superb I guess in the level mm-hmm. of, of Japanese fighting games and, and dancing games and stuff mm-hmm. so you play this in every deck that can run it we've already said these cards a bunch of times it's Balagad Recovery Valakut Awakening so far yeah so that S is for stable. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we have A is for Apple. <laughs> so A's are good, but this is a little more narrow, right? Yeah, I would consider these effects that are like, these are powerful effects. And if the deck wants them, you definitely put it in there. But they're not necessarily ones that go in every single black deck right. or every single red deck. Yeah, you put Glass Pool Mimic, which is a clone spell for creatures on your side of the battlefield. Mm-hmm. And Agadim's Awakening, which is a reanimate effect. But you need to have typically lower band of value creatures in the graveyard. Yeah, and you need to like have creatures in your graveyard. Not yeah. all of my black decks are just going to have a ton of creatures to reanimate that way. Good point. Uh, what do we have next after A? Uh, B is narrow, but good in decks that synergize with that ability. So these are not necessarily um, applicable to every deck again, and they're slightly less applicable. I, I'm yeah. thinking of like Kazul's Fury. A fling effect. Which is very powerful in decks that are making high power creatures. Right. But isn't necessarily just going to go in every red deck. Yeah, and County Ambush is a fight effect as well, right? Right. So again, you want creatures that can survive a fight mm. and you have creatures on the battlefield, whereas Glass Pool Mimic, it's like you just want to clone something on your side of the battlefield. They have to be worth the tap land in your deck to run these. Yeah. And I feel like a clone is often worth the tap tapped land and the fight spell or a fling effect has to actually synergize with your deck in order to go there cool next up we have c is for cookie this means that's playable in most decks but it's also underpowered compared to other effects that are real cards Mm -hmm. so sujiri shelter is the mono white one that gives a creature protection from a color of your choice right Mm -hmm. yes that's uh which is great uh but you could also in that deck be running a um god's willing Right, or yeah. that kind of effect. So it's yeah, good, I mean, but it's costs running, two mana, and it's not as applicable. Right? You're probably running like the free board protection spells. Right. Like there's Teferi's Protection and that kind of thing. You're running a lot of these effects already. You may not necessarily want a tapped land and another one of these effects. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The other one I think of is like Hagra Mauling, which is a four mana removal spell. It's sometimes three, but it's often four, I found. It's and a murder it, slash, yeah. Yeah, for murder. four mana. Yeah. And most of the time, you just have more efficient removal spells that, like, having an extra removal spell around isn't worth, worth the, the extra land. cost and the tap land. Yeah. I say once we get to the C and D area, we're talking about a lot of cards that feel like they're playable and limited. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and even then, not necessarily being that relevant. It could be the 23rd or 24th card in your deck. Yeah. Like, I run Hagra Mauling in a deck, but it's a deck that's a little low on interaction already, mm. and it makes a ton of mana just generally. Oh, so, so you don't need to worry about the tap Right. Line. I wouldn't say these are unplayable playable i would just say that they're like eh, you're not necessarily excited but in a deck yeah you didn't look at it and go wow i can't wait to build a deck around <laughs> sajiri shelter <laughs> all right next up we have d it's, it means this card is occasionally relevant but largely you're not gonna be playing these guys 
Yeah, these are cards that, like, like McKinney Stampede is a five mana sorcery that gives creatures you control plus two plus two until end of turn. Well, that's the only time I've ever seen that effect in Magic. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you're not really playing that kind of effect in Commander. Like, I could see it in, like, I have a Thopter deck if sure. I really wanted another Anthem effect. But most of the time, there's just better versions of this. Yeah, there's a thousand different versions of this, actually, that yeah. are probably better at this point. Uh, and then we have F is for Failure. Yeah, this is just a straight-up undesirable effect. This is not a card we play in Commander. Yeah, Palaka Predation is a two and a black sorcery that makes you duress someone, basically. Yeah, we don't play duresses, certainly not three-mana duresses, and ev- even though it's also a land, there's not enough yeah. upside there. Du- is it duress that's three or greater? Either way, you're not playing it, especially not three-mana, and especially not in Commander. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, well, duress is non-creatures. It's, uh, oh, that's it's, right. It's that's just right. like a duress kind of effect. Hand hate doesn't really happen in yeah. Commander. I haven't seen a good argument for it ever. Okay. Let's get into these. Woo-hoo. Uh, we're going to start with a cycle of 10 tapped duels, one in each color. We're going to go through them. I believe I have them in alphabetical order. Oh, yeah. cool. Look at that. Make well, it. in that case, B is for banana. We have blood-soaked insight as our first one up here. Uh, and this is a sorcery that costs five and then black, red, black, red, which means that on the other side, it's a tap land that enters and taps for black or red. These are hybrid black and red uh, pips. Sanguine morass. Morass. Hmm. Is doesn't, the doesn't sound good any way you say it. <laughs> morass. Uh. All right. Blood Soaked Inside is five and then black, red, black, red. So seven total. And it's a sorcery that says, this spell costs one less to cast for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. Target opponent exiles the top three cards of their library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. If you cast a spell this way, mana of any type can be spent to cast it. So this could potentially just cost two mana. Yeah. If you've two got five damage. Mana. Yeah. And you're the one that has to do it because this is a sorcery. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you do get to do a pretty powerful effect, which we see in a lot of great cards in Commander, which is exiling some cards off the top of your opponent's library. And then here you're going to get until the end of your next turn. So it's not full impulse where you have to do it this turn. Yeah. So you get a decent amount of time. If you have to spend, like, let's say, three mana on this or four mana on this, and you didn't have the mana castle spells, you have until the end of your next turn. And mana of any color means you can pretty much do anything here. Yeah, I I think this is an interesting uh, card. Obviously, it's not going to go in every deck because, I mean, a lot of Rakdos decks can do damage. That's sort of what Rakdos does. But it's not like in a Jund deck. You're not necessarily doing a ton of damage Mm -hmm. right away. Um, So I think this is definitely going in decks that can get this feasibly to two mana. Yeah, I think if you're pinging everyone for one, for instance, each opponent yeah. loses one life. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of aristocrats deck are going to do that here, too. And loss of life means it doesn't need to be combat damage. So any way they lose the life, even if they fetch on your turn and lose one life mm-hmm. at, on main phase for some reason, this counts towards <laughs> that. Yeah, I mean, I I would consider this an A-type effect. The fact that this is a tapped dual land in Rakdos Mm -hmm. is part of the consideration. Rakdos doesn't have a ton of lands that we play. Like, it's not in every land cycle we want it to be in. So, Rakdos is already a little bit more hard up for lands generally. And it's got a pretty powerful draw effect that goes naturally into a lot of Rakdos strategies. Yeah, a lot of impulse draw on Rakdos, a lot of stealing stuff off your opponents, thanks to the black. Mm -hmm. Uh, And red, too. Uh, I'm going to give this a B, maybe trending towards A. I think this being a sorcery is a bit of a bummer. Yeah. If this was an instant, this is an A+, maybe even an S, I feel like. Because there are just turns where someone gets smacked for 10, and all of a sudden you have that extra mana open, and boy, you get to do some powerful stuff. Yeah, I Um, could see this being a B. But that's pushed, I think, if it it was an instant. (laughs) It is drawing cards off of your opponent's library, so I could see only running this in decks that cares about casting your opponent's spells or can definitely do the damage. I think B is reasonable. Yeah, B or A, I think. But again, in your own taste, it could be either one. Yeah. Because you might be like, great, I just haven't, this happens to be my play style. For instance, I do love to steal things off my opponent's library. And I don't run much card draw. Here's some free ones. Hey, I like that. I have to do some damage, though. Mm. Okay, next up we have the Drowner of Truth. This is five in Simic, so on the other end, it's the Drown Jungle. Get it? It's a watery jungle. Water forest. Yeah. It taps for I green like or blue. That. Yeah. Uh, so this is five, and it's seven mana as well, so five Simic Simic. For a seven six Devoid, card has no color. Uh, when you cast this spell, it's a creature. If colorless mana was spent to cast it, you create two zero one 1 Eldrazi spawn with Sacrifice's creature, add a colorless mana. 
So I think in most decks, this is a seven mana, seven, six. Yeah. And you're probably not, I mean, some decks, you may never have the colorless mana. I think most times in commander, by the time you get to seven mana, you can probably find at least one colorless a mana. A talisman or a soul ring or like, There's you something know, in there. Yeah. Even a the pain land. Yeah, exactly. But this card is mostly unplayable, I think. Yeah. I don't see a lot of upside to just having a seven, six with, with no evasion unless you're playing Eldrazi literally. And even then your fixing is so rough that I don't know if you're going to do yeah. it. Yeah. Land that isn't fetchable. And you also have to be in green, blue Eldrazi. Which is kind of weird, yeah. yeah. It, it feels like if you're playing green and blue and Eldrazi, you're playing five colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And at that point, Drowner of Truth, there are a lot of Eldrazi out, so you're not even starving for it. It's not like, oh, I have an Eldrazi, I gotta jam every Eldrazi in there. It's like, yeah. no, you got choices now. The only thing I could see it in is if you're in a deck that like regularly cheats creatures into play and mm. you just want as many fatties as possible in right. your deck. So there could be a land in your hand, but oh, or off of like a Silvala Stampede. I think that works. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's a creature on the front side, right? So if you have right. something that says you can put a creature from your hand into play, then maybe you want a, just a sort of a free giant spell. Yeah. But that's really the only scenario that I could see looking at this card. Yeah. I would call it like a D. Oh, me too. D. Uh, up next, we've got Glasswing Grace. This one's Orzov. It's three hybrid white-black, hybrid white-black, so five mana altogether. For an aura, that's enchant creature gets plus two, plus two, and has flying and lifelink. Hey, on the a back. Throwback. The to what? There's an Orzhov spell with like the beautiful. Oh, was it wings. from uh, Dominaria? No, it's before that. I think it's like Innistrad or something. Even yeah. it's uh -huh. a beautiful spell. It's like one of those iconic arts. Anyway, if you see it on the screen, you can spam it in the comments. That's why I don't know it, so that we get more engagement. The uh, backside is a tapped Orzhov land, age graced chapel. Aw, age graced. That's black white. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a five mana aura, so that's already going to knock it down the chart pretty far. Yeah, you don't you don't want to be playing five mana auras in your aura deck in general. Uh, but if you are an aura deck and you do like the ability, sometimes, by the way, the plus two plus two and the life link is actually very relevant. I would call these incredible keywords, especially for an aura deck. And yeah. it's it's really hard to get the balance right in those decks that are playing a bunch of auras because you need a, a ton of creatures to put your auras on. And then, of course, you want all the auras for your aura synergies. Right. So I actually really like this in specifically aura decks. Okay. Yeah, um, I actually i am going to bump my grade up on it as well because I'm just thinking your deck has a commander. That's a creature. And if you just need to get extra life and flying and evasion... This is this card does it, and at a pretty minimal cost. I I would say this is a little bit ambitious, but I'm going to tentatively call this a B, which is the is super narrow, but it's good in decks that synergize. Yeah. Just because of the limitation of the kind of decks that it would go into anyway. Yeah, I agree. Just it, upping those numbers is awesome. If Kazul's Fury a fling is a B, then this to me is also a B. I think so. Yeah, that makes sense. It feels similar. All right, next up we have Legion Leadership. Can you guess what color this is? It's Boros. It makes Legion Stronghold on the other end, which <laughs> sounds like a 30,000 cards that have been printed before. I was going to say, I can't <laughs> believe that is not a card already. Yeah, Legion Leadership is one and a Boros, so only two mana for an instant, and says, until end of turn, double target creature's power, and it gains first strike. I am a big fan of this card. I'm just going to say B straight up. Because, again, I think of Kazul's Fury or mm -hmm. a Jun deck or a green-red uh, deck that doubles power all the time. Oh, yeah. This is exactly what you want. And it costs nothing almost. Yeah, I love this card. Um, the fact that this is a trick that you can use on your creatures or your opponent's creatures, I th th there are going to be situations where this is in your hand and you're like, I am going to wreck somebody with this. Or win the game as a result. No one's seeing this double creature's power in, yeah. You know, Obviously, you want to be in an aggressive Boros deck that's swinging with high power creatures. Um, you want to create the situation where this is going to be good. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's just on a tapped dual land and you can replace many, it gives it first strike. Yeah, first yeah, strike. Yeah, yeah. You can replace any other utility land. I could see replacing like a Castle Arvind. Arvind Garden Bale, Bale, yeah. I don't think I've one. activated that one time in my life. So. No, like this seems like a great replacement for that where you're, if it's in your hand, you're like, I could kill somebody with this yeah. or I just need one more hit with my commander to get to commander. Or deck. my other friend's commander, hey, oh, I'm at 14. I'm just going to put me up to 14 and it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, it's fine. I'll let it hit me. Like, oh, it's going to kill you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. It feels like um, like Tainted Strike, kind of, but a yeah. little less uh, polarizing. Yeah, Legion Leadership. 
If it said double strike, this card would be way busted. But this card would be way busted. Burst strike is great because again, if you are a deck that plays any amount of combat tricks, mm-hmm. this card is could replace an actual combat trick for a better one, mm-hmm. right? You could find a kind of mediocre one, and this one does relevant things for a lot of decks. Doubling power seems to be something that you s- seems to be climbing yeah. in the ranks of. This is sweet in like too. in a feather deck, of course, if you're playing oh, any sort yeah. of tricks. Feather. That's very loves fun. That card. All right, uh, this next one's a good one. It is a good one. It's revitalizing repast. It's a single green or black mana. So this wow. is a Golgari spell for an instant. Put a plus one counter on target creature. It gains indestructible until end of turn. The backside is old growth grove, a Golgari land. I can't believe it's his target creature and not your own creature you control. That you can, you like mess up somebody else's combat? Yeah, I think it's just like... Is it necessary from a design standpoint? Because they, it's an easy lever to pull, and mm-hmm. it doesn't really change the the grading of the card that sure, much. Yeah. Because again, we talked about that the Legion leadership. Oh, you can oh, yeah. do it with your commander, but it's like yep. it's not going to happen that often. Yeah. But the fact that it can is like, well, let's bump the rankings up a little yeah. higher. Yeah. This is one mana. <laughs> this is one mana. I mean, it smells like Malakir Rebirth, and it's a dual land on the back. It's yeah. just because of the amount of, that I play Malakir Rebirth, uh, which says, like, if a thing would die, bring it back to the battlefield. Mm-hmm. I am certainly going to play a similar effect, protection, spell, um, that does the same thing and has further upside. Yeah, it's really good. Um, even if it just saves your commander, again, that's a guaranteed creature you have in your deck. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I saw you gave this a good grade, and I think I got to bump mine up too. I'm gonna call this an S. I just because of the way I play Malakir Rebirth, and this does functionally the same thing for the way that I play Malakir Rebirth. Right, Obviously, you're not there's for other. And stuff. I'm not usually looping like Kakushos or that kind of thing. I'm right. just putting it in decks to protect important creatures. I think this is going to be that level of good. The fact so, that it costs one mana is really what puts yeah. this into S range. The biggest issue, of course, with all of these is they're two colors. So they're going to be played in fewer decks because these can only go in Goldagari decks rather than Malachi Rebirth, which only goes in black, which can go in any black deck. All right, next up we have an interesting one. It's Rush of Inspiration. It's the uh, Is It one. So it's one and then two Is It mana, so three mana total. For an instant that says draw two cards, then discard a card at random unless you pay two energy counters. So energy has been reintroduced in Modern Horizons. Originally, oh. we saw it in Kaladesh. Uh, I never thought it was coming back. It has come back. This is a three-mana spell. Draw two, discard one at random, almost always, unless you're an energy deck. Right. I, I would consider this draw two, discard one at random, which um, at instant speed is interesting. It's interesting. It's definitely blue. But here's the thing. It's not even discarding a card at random from the cards you drew. Yeah. It's, it's from one your, from your hand. whole hand. So that, this, to me, is scary. You have to be really... Into Either, discarding car- instants yeah. and sorceries in your graveyard or something. Yeah. yeah, it has to be like a flashback deck. It has You have to be comfortable discarding basically anything in your deck, I yeah, think, before you time. run this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, if you're an energy deck, cool. Then it, then it seems good. Uh, mm-hmm. That's very, very narrow. I don't think I'd put this in any of my Is It decks right now because nope. three mana draw... To discard one at random. To discard one at random. Like, even in my Dragon's Approach deck, which wants to discard Dragon's Approaches, if I discard the wrong spell, I'm in big trouble. Yeah. I mean, this is three mana draw one card, basically. Basically. And potentially lose a card you actually really wanted. Doesn't seem like there's a super high upside. That being said, like, if you're in a Spellslinger deck and you just want as many spells as possible, there are probably homes for this. Yeah. Maybe you're trying to storm off and you just need a little bit more to get you going and you have a hand size of 20, so discarding one at random is not going to hurt. like it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like I, I could see the decks that would play this, but it's very, very risky, I think. Yeah. I I would I would call this I don't know. I, I have C written down, but playable in most decks, I think, is a stretch. Yeah, this is um, a D for me. Yeah, I, I Almost like D. F. <laughs> I like D better. It's very, very risky. And if I'm like I could just play a Scryland and yeah. that would get me similar value. <laughs> yep, that's a good point. Without the risk. All right, next up we have Strength of the Harvest. It's two, a green and a white, a green or a white, so Selesnia. So mm-hmm. three mana total for enchantment aura. Enchant creature, it gets plus one, plus one for each creature and or enchantment you control. And on the backside, it's Haven of the Harvest, which is a tap land for green or white. So each creature and or enchantment you control, I think this is actually really powerful. I like this spell a lot, and it might be... I was thinking about it, of course, for aura decks. Like I think, I think Glasswing Grace only goes in aura decks. Yeah, this this one is a little different. I could see this going in token decks. 
Yep, for sure. If you randomly make a, a creature into like a 10-10 out of nowhere, that's big game, especially if you have evasion. Uh, and then enchantment decks are just randomly around the table, so you're going to get and some... Plus desperate one. for win conditions. Yeah, right? Desperate. They're, they're going to get like a plus one or a plus two, even if you're not <laughs> an enchantress deck. But yeah, they're desperate. And this counts as one. Yeah, I, I really like this. I do think it's a similar thing, like a density. With, mm-hmm. with enchantress decks, you just want as many enchantments as you can possibly put in the deck. Yeah. And having another enchantment that could actually turn the tides in a game is really, really valuable. This counts itself, by the way. So the creature that you're putting it on, because it's a creature in Enchantment Nora, it's at minimum plus two, plus two. So yeah. that, to me, is like, okay, now we're talking. This isn't going to be a dead spell in your hand ever. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, if you're green-white and you don't like the idea of making one of your creatures buff at surprise notice, then you're not going to be playing this kind of thing. But I'm going to give this card an A. I like A for it. I mean, I wasn't really thinking about it in decks that are just like, like, if your commander has trample, this is just kind of fine and, like, yeah. interesting. And what's it at, at its worst? A tapped green-white land on the other side. Which perfectly playable yeah, yeah you're, you're in green you probably don't have that, ma- that much trouble with mana so that also affects this well this next one is stump stomp yeah stump stomp, stump, stomp. <laughs> what I do when I go to LGS is I stump stomp. I stump stomp. Yeah, net deck and stump stomping. Uh, this is predictably gruel. It's one and hybrid red green for a sorcery. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. It's okay. a bite effect. And on the back is burn willow clearing a red green tapped uh, duel, of course. So only two mana. It's a one directional fight spell. Um, I like it. I think it's pretty nice. It, it reminds me of a Kazul's Fury type deck again. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give this a B. Yeah, this is an interesting spell because I do think if you're in Gruul, you're going to have the creatures to support this. Yeah. And you should play it. Because red green is a little hard up for creature removal. Uh, even at sorcery speed, I think the fact that this just gives you a little flexibility hmm. and gives you a little bit of interaction that is not as easy for on the creature front, of course, in green and red. It, it's nice that you have a bite spell that, when it's not relevant, just play, is a land. Yeah, I actually like that reasoning a lot um, because I don't like playing bite spells in my green red decks. Yeah. A single target removal that's not necessarily going to get rid of them, I'd rather do beast within, right? Yeah. And so having this as a land and a bite spell to me is like, oh, there is the sweet spot I was looking for. I don't often like beast within because if I'm playing gruel, I want to punch and Mm -hmm. giving them a 3-3 prevents me from punching. And the fact that this is just a removal spell that isn't the best, but is what the spell, like this combo is good at, makes me consider it very highly when I'm playing gruel. Obviously, if you're playing like Jund graveyard like stuff, (laughs) this isn't going to go in there. But if you're playing a stompy dinosaur deck, stump stomp away. I'm calling this an A. Or if you have a death touch on your commander or creatures in your deck. Two. Very, very good. All right, next up we have Suppression Ray. This is Orzhov, so three and then two Orzhov mana. Uh, Azorius. Azorius, I'm so sorry. Azorius, three and two Azorius mana. Three Azorius, Azorius, five total. Sorcery, it says tap all creatures target player controls. You may pay X energy, mm-hmm. then choose up to X creatures tap this way, put a stun counter on each of them. On the other end, it's Orderly Plaza. It's a white blue land that I'm never going to play. No, it's five mana tap all your opponent's creatures. Uh, One what time. This is what this spell is. Yeah, you're, if you're the energy deck, look into it. Otherwise, this is a straight D for me. I'm going to call this a D as well. It reminds me of McKendee's Stampede where you're like, oh, yeah. I guess there is a moment where this would be good. Yeah. But I'm not putting this in my deck. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's so many other ways to get around your cre- your opponent's creatures and stuff. The final one is Waterlogged Teachings. Three and a hybrid Demir. Four mana altogether for an instant. Search your library for an instant card or a creature with flash. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. On the back is Inundated Archive. It's a I'm tutor. Sorry. It's a tutor. It's a four mana tutor, don't get me wrong. But this is a tutor. This is a straight A. I... I'm calling this an A as well, and I don't love <laughs> so playing many, tutors. Yeah, but I would play that because if you four mana tutor, you know. Yeah. That sucks, but it's also great. <laughs> so this is exactly what I want my tutors to do, which is like find me a board wipe when I need a board wipe, right. or it like it's it's an instant speed board wipe. You Get, can't yeah, find a sorcery, but yeah. like it it's. This is an, an emergency button tutor where I'm like, I'm not going to pay four mana to get my combo piece most of the time. Yeah, I'm going to play this as a land. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to play this as a land yeah. unless I need a removal spell right now or I need a counter spell right now. And, can, and yeah. now this helps you find it at instant speed into your hand. Yeah, or a card with flash. So there's minor synergy there. There's mm-hmm. like a couple of commanders that care about flash, but any flash lovers are going to be like, yup, bingo, <laughs> I'm in for it. Yeah, I will learn from the waterlogged 
Uh, it's a book that like came out of a puddle. The waterlogged teachings was the inundated yeah. archive. There's a lot of synergy between the names here and the art, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the the library got flooded, it and got now flooded. All, and now all the teachings are water water like that's why they cost four mana instead of two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, those are the 10 tapped dual lands. Uh, pretty high on these. Of course, they're tapped lands, so you have to consider them like you would any tapped land. Um, and synergy, synergy, synergy is the key here. A lot of A's and even one S in there. We are going to move on to the bolt lands. These are monocolored cards, and they are extremely powerful. There are potentially upwards of three S's in this category. So stick around. We've got a few words from our sponsors. Wowee! Look, everyone, it's me, Loot, from the Thunder Junction Vault. Feels like forever I was trapped in there, but now that the world's seen me, it wants more! Plushies, keychains, stickers, everybody wants their loot loot, and I want that sweet cash cash. But I don't know how to actually sell stuff. I'm just a little guy! So my key to everything was Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business with powerful tools like the internet's best converting checkout and award-winning support. So far, my brand's been on the way up, but I'm not pulling freaking baby Yoda numbers yet. Luckily, Shopify works just as hard for the plucky upstart as they do for big brands like Allbirds and Brooklinen. They gave me everything I need to sell my loot loot to adoring fans all over the world. Now I'm free to focus on being adorable instead of learning e-commerce because who wants to do that? Not a cutie pie like me. I want to roll around in money. Whee! Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tcz, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash tcz now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash tcz. You know what's crazy? MagicCon Amsterdam is right around the corner. Yeah, I mean, I've already started packing. Wait, it's not that soon, is it? Oh no, what day is it? Did I just rip Van Winkle myself? Uh, no. Also, I don't know what that reference was, but I did have an auto-include that I already threw in my bag. It's my doer performance jeans. These things have become a real suitcase staple for me. I went to Japan recently, and there was a ton of walking involved. So my doer jeans were the ideal travel companion. They're comfortable, high quality, and designed to keep you cool and dry. The best part, though, is just how flexible they are, literally and figuratively. Even when I had no idea what the day would bring, I knew my doer jeans, they could handle it. 10-mile hike, fancy romantic dinner, chill game night with friends, they were always the perfect fit. I gotta pack mine, too. I'm gonna do a lot of cycling in Amsterdam. Like a bike tour? No, like triomes. Oh, cycling. See for yourself why Dewar is the most wanted denim. I know you'll love these jeans. Visit Dewar's flagship stores in LA or Denver or shop online at shopdewar.com slash command. Right now, our listeners get 20% off their first order when you use our exclusive URL, shopdewer.com slash command. This is an amazing deal. Don't wait, get 20% off your first order right now at shopdewer.com slash command. Bruce and Silas, Vice Scots. This episode, Just Deserts. <laughs> Come on, Bruce. We're right on Oko's tail. We can bring this whole crime ring down. Ah! What happened to you? The hot desert sun has changed me. I'm dying. Go on without me, Silas. Ugh. You're just dehydrated. You need Liquid IV, America's number one powdered hydration brand. Here, just tear up on a stick, pour it into your water, stir, and drink. <laughs> Hey, that's good. Liquid IV comes in a ton of flavors and is easy to take with you on the go. I always carry an extra tube of sugar-free green grape with me, because whether you're chasing a criminal through the desert or just enjoying a summer day, heat is no joke. Luckily, Liquid IV has eight vitamins and nutrients and three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink. I feel the electrolytes working. Let's get that scumbag. <sighs> so hot, so tired. Gotcha. Oko, more like Sloco. How? I drank the leading sports drink! Ha! That's where you went wrong, villain! Turn your ordinary water into extraordinary hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code COMMAND at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code COMMAND at liquidiv.com. Alright, my new deck list is complete. Now, let's see which cards I don't already own and buy them. Wait! How'd you do that without going through a million boxes? Oh, I just use Architect. They make it super easy to upload and manage your collection. Then when you're done brewing a deck, you can sort it by collection status to see what you already have. So this group is just cards you don't own? Yep, I just click buy this stack and it takes me right to Card Kingdom. Whoa. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and playtest commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. All right, we are now doing the Bolt Lands. These are even spicier than before because these all have the ability to come in untapped. There are some really good ones in here. I'm very excited. We've seen the mythic versions of these be really popular. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, now let's see how well the uncommon versions do. It is so wild that these are uncommon, and I love it because they're the kind of cards that can go in every deck. Mm -hmm. So, And like all of the mythic bolt lands are like, 15 bucks, 20 yeah, bucks. Yeah, they're up there. And hopefully this accessibility will keep those prices down and you can actually put these into your deck reliably. Yeah, and I like it too because they don't make your deck like, oh, you just put in three free counter spells. It's like, no, you're playing useful, interactive, fun stuff that in, uh, that supports your strategy and mm -hmm. occasionally is rising to the level of like, you should be playing a lot of these. Yeah, we'll see it uh, as we go, but many of these are interaction spells. Yeah. And that's great. That makes games more dynamic and it means that when you're trying to fit in all of your vegetables, Bowls, which hopefully you're running like at least 10 pieces of interaction you can squeeze in a land a little bit as yeah, well yeah there you go All right this first one is an ambush it's razor grass ambush the grass ambush you yeah the razor grass oh it's, sorry that's why it, it cuts have you ever had a like a grass cut? Yeah, it's awful, actually. Yeah, there nature can be sharp, man. What yeah, the heck? we used to do the thing where you put grass in between your fingers and you oh, like, yeah, blow yeah, into yeah. it and it whistles, Ooh. and I, you would definitely get uh, grass cuts. little cuts from doing it. All right, well, this is razor grass, so mm -hmm. it's in the name. We should have known better. The other side is razor grass field. It's an instant from one in the white. Razor grass ambush deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. So I have loved Igonjo, the channel land Igonjo. Yeah. And I found that Igonjo typically costs one in the white. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it deals four damage to an attacking or blocking creature. Yeah. This only does three, which is a significant difference. But Still it comes good. up a lot. And it just means that you're freer to attack a lot of the time. You can pick off an early, like, professional facebreaker without feeling like you burned a sword to plow yeah, or, yeah, like, a path yeah. to exile. Especially in white, you're, I feel like those two removal spells are so precious where I only want to spend them if I'm going to, like, die to a thing. Mm -hmm. But there are early creatures like ledger shredders and yeah. fairy masterminds that oh if my they're gosh, attacking... getting a ledger shredder on their first connive trigger is sick. That would, That's I mean... incredible. That would be awesome. If they're attacked... They have to be attacking or blocking with it, of course, but like picking off a fairy mastermind that's just attacking for two for free, this is going to feel incredible yeah, in those like moments. Uh, I should read the back of these. Yes. They all say this is as blank name of the card enters the battlefield, you may pay three life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tapped. So this is a mono white land. The first, we'll, do it, we'll be doing them in Wu or color. So the first two will be mono white. Second mm -hmm. two will be uh, blue and so on. Razorgrass Ambush for me is really, really powerful. However, it is pretty situational. Yeah. Um, I, I think if I'm playing white, it's not often that in the early game I have two mana open that I yeah, can yeah. just spend this on. Uh, and it, I may just be want to be playing it as a land because white is so desperate to hit its land drops that I, I think I'm going to call this a C tentatively. I really, I like really that. hope. I really hope, though, it's... An A. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it a B so we can balance that out. Um, yeah. I've had great success with that Gonjo, so I will have to test it out. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm a little optimistic. Maybe I'll just find that, like, ooh, X3s are not as prevalent as I thought. I really hope it's a B because that's how I how I picture it in my head. Yeah, yeah. Is like I love Igonjo. I channel it all the time, and uh, Razor Grash Ambush is another one of those. So yeah, let's call like it a B, an optimistic B. Optimistic B, but it may actually be a C. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see, because Igonjo could also cost one. All right, next up we have Witch Enchanter. Mm -hmm. I love this one. Uh, three and a white for a human warlock creature. That's a two-two. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or an enchantment that opponent controls. And nice. In the back, it's a land. You can pay three life. If it not, it enters the battlefield. Tap for planes. Yeah, nice is right. This is, so it's a four mana reclamation stage, basically. Sure. You can't blow up your own stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I think you play this in any deck that's trying to run mono white lands. I mean. This is an S for me. I Four mana may seem like a lot, but just having one more blow up artifact mm -hmm. and jam spell in your deck for pretty much no cost is worth it. And I want to talk about this because it's in white. And white is so good at naturally recurring creatures back to the battlefield mm, or blinking yeah. creatures. You're running Sword of Hearth and Home, which just incidentally needs something to blink. There's a lot of synergy that just goes with what white is good at. And yes, it's four mana, but if you need to kill a Smothering Tithe or you need to kill a Bolus of Citadel... You'll pay that mana. You're going to pay. Yeah. Because it needs to go. <laughs> and you're in mono white, so the life loss is really not a big deal in yeah. a large percentage of those decks. 
So, I mean, if you're either in mono white, I think you're playing this most times, mono white, two color decks. Mm -hmm. Maybe three color decks, you can find space for it if you have space for just the land that comes in tap for white. Mm -hmm. But I think it's an S because in the mono white decks, it's a no brainer. And in most two color decks, I think it's also a no brainer. Yeah, I really like it in um, it, maybe not white green decks because green is also really good at, at taking sure. care of it, artifacts and enchantments. But white red, but white, white blue. blue. Any other, if you're pairing it with a color that struggles with this and you know you're not going to get the support from the other color, lean on white a little bit harder and which enchanter is going to feel so good in your hand yeah so good and again so many of those strategies have life gain built into them as well so mm -hmm. you can never make that argument against it really as for this i like it a lot too yeah s s s uh, up next is Hydroelectric Specimen. This is blue. It's two and a blue for a 1-4 weird with flash. <laughs> when Hydroelectric Specimen enters the battlefield, you may change the target of target instant or sorcery with a single target to Hydroelectric Specimen. Right. On the back is, of course, a blue bolt land. Yeah, so again, needs to be like a single target removal spell like Swords of Plowshares, mm -hmm. uh, Path of Exile. And then you can say, hey, instead of targeting my commander or this creature I love, it's going to now switch to me, the hydroelectric specimen at two in the blue mana for flash. <laughs> it's me. It's me. It's a... Uh... <laughs> Test it on me, please. <laughs> uh, this card's interesting. And I do think there are certain decks where it's going to be really, it's going to be really powerful. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to, I'm a little high on this because mm -hmm. I don't like Misdirection, even though yeah. it's a free spell that is a very similar thing, if not the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's a land that can get her untapped. I think blue... You know, having a, a little bit of everything is one of my favorite ways to play blues. Like, oh, there's a counter spell that does this, but there's also a spell that kind of redirects and does this. And they have mm -hmm. a Narcissus Reversal, which kind of does that, but, that, but does this. And this, to me, fills in another slot at not a huge cost, similar to Razorgrass or Witch Enchanter. Mm -hmm. You're playing it in colors that want to have this effect, probably two colors. I'm going to give this a B. I'm giving this a C. <laughs> I mean, if you're in blue and you're playing this, like you, you're probably going to be able to hold up mana to do it. But three is a lot to hold up, mm -hmm. and it doesn't quite work the turn I want it to. Like I would put this in decks where my commander is a lightning rod, right? Mm, right. Where I know I need to protect my commander because people are going to want to remove it. But most of the time when I'm running protection spells, I'm I want to protect it the turn my commander came out. Right. And it's going to be difficult to cast your commander and be able to hold this up in that pivotal turn when you want the protection. Yep. Uh, I think it's going to feel a little bit more awkward in your hand than you want it to, but in decks that really, really need to protect their commander, especially on pivotal turns, mm -hmm. I could see it being pretty valuable. I, I'm going to call it a C, I think. Yeah, and it is a little narrow with the needs mm -hmm. to be a single target. Um, so that can also knock it down a bit. All right, next one's fun, though. This next one is busted. It's sink, sink, slink, sink into stupor. One blue blue for an instant. Return target spell or non-land permanent an opponent controls to its owner's hand on the back is soporific springs. Wow. Which so is a blue bolt land. One blue blue, you get a vents or something? Yeah. I mean, this is incredible. Yeah, this is very good. Um, I love bounce spells. I've talked about it a lot. But the fact that you can bounce like a big X spell, you can bounce a board wipe. You're gonna, I'm gonna buy one more turn from a board wipe. Yeah, it's a huge amount of protection and an extra sort of soft counter spell, so you don't have to run, you know, like seven of them. This is like the most socially acceptable counter spell in general because it's like, okay, fine, it's in my hand, or okay, fine, I put it on top of my library, one mm -hmm. of those types. Yeah. But yeah, this is very good because it also hits per non land permanence. So that is big timing as well. You can bounce a creature. It's not just a spell on the stack. Mm -hmm. I think it'll probably be mostly stuff on the board in general because it's harder to hold up and mm -hmm. know when to use this. And if you're a responsive deck in blue, you're probably going to counter as well if it's really that bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think this is very, very powerful. And any blue deck that likes interaction is probably going to want to play something like this. Yeah, I mean, I'm slamming this into an Octavia list, which is sort of like CDC. Anytime right. I can make a land into an instant or sorcery, I want that. But... That's the kind of thing that a lot of blue decks want. They really yeah. like really want it to be on a spells to trigger all of their abilities. They really want mm -hmm. like a bunch of instant or sorceries in the graveyard or a high density for when they cast like a you know cast the the top X cards of my library. The red, I'm thinking of the blue red sorcery like epic experiment. Oh yeah, epic experiment. Yeah, this actually works because mm. it's a it doesn't have to hit something on the stack. Right. So it's you good in like cascade something. decks and that kind of thing because uh, you can bounce something uh, in addition to having the utility that it's a counterspell in your hand. Yeah, this is very good. Uh, 
I gave this an A originally, mm. but you might be right that this is an S. I think this is certainly an S for me. Um, it's the kind of thing that I'm going to slam into all of my blue decks. Yeah. All right. Let's move into black now. We've got the Boggart Traveler. and the Trawler. Trawler, sorry. Boggart Trawler. He's trawling. <laughs> kind of traveling. And he's, there's the Boggart Bog on the back, what he's trawling through. <laughs> It's a two in the black, three one goblin. When it enters the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard and Bogart Bog. You can pay three life to have it enter untapped. Otherwise, it is just a regular tapped black land. He's a Bajuka Mog. Bajuka Mog. He's a oh, goblin. He's a go- Bajuka Gob. Bajuka Gob. Yeah, there you go. I like that. I like this card a lot. Yeah. Um, I think this card's really. I mean, again, there's so many times when it's like, oh, I got to play my Bajuka Bog early, mm-hmm. but I could hold my Bogart trawler up later because <laughs> really when you're exiling graveyards you just want to exile one player's graveyard typically i mm-hmm. found mass exile is great too but having this also just on the creature is pretty fun there's a lot of upside here especially in black uh black's really good at taking creatures from your graveyard putting it into your hand yep uh so this works really well with that black's not as good at like taking lands from your graveyard like bajukabog and putting it into your hand um, the fact that you can reanimate it or sacrifice it or clamp it yeah. are all very, very good upsides for this. I like it. Um, I'm going to give it a B. Do you want to pay three mana for a Bajuka Bog, though? It's sorcery if you speed. Need, if you need to, because yeah. Bajuka Bog is at sorcery speed, yeah. it becomes the most important spell at yeah. the moment. Yeah, that's true. Stopping the graveyard player is, like to me, so, so important. Yeah, you're at the least graveyard just player, being Rachel, a speed bomb. And I need to stop. Yeah. You. You're the reason why it's a B. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I milk too many cards with City C. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I put this into City C right away. It's perfect in that deck. Oh, I honestly nice. just replaced Bajuka Bog for it. Because oh, wow. I'm, I'm way better at getting creatures out of my graveyard than lands. Ah, uh, okay. There's some ways to do that, but... Um, no, that's great. I love that reasoning right there, for sure. Like, it's an untapped Bajuka Bog in a deck that wants creatures. You could also bounce it to your hand or something or mm-hmm. return it to your hand from a graveyard and then play it as a land, which is awesome, too. Right? Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. You could sack it and then play it from your graveyard. Yeah. Um... I don't know. I, I have it written as a C, but I it's do think... It's a C. You said it on camera. C, I don't know. You said it's a C. I, but you I did put it in a deck, so it's probably like it's probably going to be closer to a B. I'm curious to see how it feels. If it's in your hand and I'm just like, I'm never going to cast this spell, and I just play it as like yeah. a bad swamp. Is it going to be as good as you want? Well, you'll have to see. Yeah. We'll call it a C plus. C plus. <laughs> I like that. All right. Next up, we got a fun one. Oh, yeah. Fell the Profane. One last one in black here. It's two mm-hmm. black black for an instant, and it says, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Sounds this, like Hagra Mauling. This is a <laughs> the one of the easiest S's to give. Um, a three life tap line on the back. If you're going to play this in the deck and need a removal spell, this four mana, sure not great, but when you need it, you don't care. Yeah, I mean, it, this is better than Hagra Mauling for a couple of reasons. It has Planeswalkers, and it's an untapped land. Yeah. So it, it the cost reduction on Hagra Mauling just doesn't usually come up in my yeah, experience. Yeah, pretty rare. Um, I am also going to call this an S. When you need a removal spell, you need a removal spell, and this is so free. Yeah. But again, be careful of your swamp count. Yes. Yeah, Mono Black does care about that more than any other color. Yeah. All right, let's move on to red now. There's uh, four left. Uh, the first card. one is Sundering yeah. Eruption. No, the first one's Pinnacle Monk. Oh, is it? Pinnacle it, Monk. It's Pinnacle Monk. It's three red red for a Jin Monk with prowess. He's a 2-2. When he enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand on the back oh, red bolt land. Oh my gosh, it's so good. This How many incredible. times have I been like, man, if only I could get that card back. Yeah, just buy my mana geyser back. It get is a board five back. mana, but who cares? I think this is so powerful. What's the blue one that like combos with everything? Our Archaeomancer. Archaeomancer, that's yeah. four mana, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's this is Archaeomancer. Yeah, yeah they typically no... put this at four and five. You won't yeah. see versions of this very often at three or lower. Because so. it's busted. Yeah, so. You can get a time warp back. Yeah, Pinnacle Monk, uh, uh, this is an easy A for me. Yes, I think if if there's if there's a moment, it's going to be great. It's going to feel like Valaged Recovery, Yeah, I think. Where most of the time, you're going to play it as a land, but when it's great, oh my God, you're so excited. You're to so see it. happy that it's there, yeah, for sure. It's yeah, red a, a for me as well. Not every deck wants it, but when you do, you do. All right, now it's time for Sundering Eruption, which is not an A. We'll just say that. No, sorry, spoiler <laughs> alert. It's a sorcery for two and a red. Destroy target land. Its controller may search the library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle, and then creatures without flying can't block this turn. 
I don't think I ever want to cast this spell. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either, but I do actually think this is, for me, a C. I think this mm-hmm. is actually playable in a lot of decks. Mm-hmm. Uh, just having a, an occasional win the game stacked onto it is nice. Yeah. And maybe you don't have strip mines. Maybe you're not the kind of person that r- likes to do that. Having some, I think they're trying to bring back land destruction in a way. Just a little bit. A little bit, yeah. As just a, a smidge. As a treat. Yeah, and all yeah, it's a treat. <laughs> and this is land destruction that doesn't make the opponent feel as bad. Mm. Uh, but if you need to get rid of a really troublesome land, then this is very powerful. Yeah, I mean, I run Demolition Field, which functionally costs three to pop something. Right. Um, and so this is similar. It's just also on a spell and has the upside of maybe this turn is completely bonkers and yeah. a player who thought they were safe is not nope, safe. because you can't block all of a sudden. Yeah, I think Alter. you think about this as a modal spell with a land on the back. And when you think about it that way, it's definitely more powerful than you think it is yeah but i'm still giving it a c i like c i'm not excited to put this into a deck but i could see putting this into a deck i could see putting it into a deck wow what a (laughs) thank you for making that joke everybody loved it (laughs) jimmy fallout uh (laughs) i loved it because i made it 17 times this episode yeah all right but i made it now (laughs) and now and now it's better (laughs) yeah Yeah, it was just so much easier to hear. Yeah. And yeah. I found myself just laughing instinctually. <laughs> I, was, I was like so present in the moment. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The warmth of that joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh incredible. God. All right. What a, what a gift. This next card is pretty good, I think. It's Bridgeworks yeah. Battle. Uh, two and a green for a sorcery. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. It fights up to one target creature you don't control. And you, blam, blam. It's a green land on the back. Stump stomp. It's stump stompy, but it's a fight instead of a bite. Yeah, on, on the bridge, by the way. Uh, uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a, some sort of troll. Yeah. Uh, so I am not as high on this, probably. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to give this a C because it is a sorcery and yep. it requires a fight. But I do like this card a lot. And again, green wants to have more removal that, and it's tough to find good removal in green, I think. So yeah. this to me still is it's smiling nicely. This also opens up an attack with, a, with your commander sometimes because mm-hmm. the plus two plus two is is the kind of thing that I would look at and be like, oh, this means I can attack this person for free. Right. Like, if I have a commander with an attack trigger, this looks way better. Because now you give it plus two, plus two, you bite something, and then you have a window to attack into. No, it fights. So you, that fight, you fight something. Yeah. Uh, and then you have a window to attack into that you didn't have before. Yeah. I think this is a very aggressive card. You want to be in a deck mm. that's a front foot deck. Um, where you're trying to bash in for damage and this gives you sort of a free removal spell that doesn't take up a slot that you yeah. want to dedicate to a more aggressive creature. Yeah, I like that. Um, again, if your deck wants this, it is going to be very happy for it. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to call it a B for that reason. Um, but cool. it is a little over-costed. And we, the Colony Garden is a C? Colony Garden, yeah. We decided, yeah. All right, we got one Colony more. Ambush, excuse uh, me. Ambush. That's right. Ambush, like the razor grass. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Came out of nowhere, that Came grass. out of nowhere, MDFCs. You would think with so many letters in the name, you would see it coming from a mile away. <laughs> this one has a lot of letters and mana costs. It's Disciple of Freilis, our last green MDFC. It's three and then three green, so three GGG. For an elf druid, 3-3, three, three. one that enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, you gain X life and draw X cards, where X is that creature's power. It's the Disciple. Yeah. This is very powerful. This is Disciple of Fraley's instead of of Bolas. Yeah, this is very, very powerful, I think. It's six yeah. mana, don't get us wrong. Yes. But oftentimes, in the right decks, this is drawing you like seven, ten, twelve cards or something. The limitation of this card is green, green, green. Uh, yeah. And I think, like, six mana is not your limitation. In the kind of decks that want this, you can pay for six mana, no problem. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be your mono green or your gruel, stompy, big, sp- guy's card it's yeah. basically another uh oh, the, the four and a green one like a rich card's ex- expertise yeah rich card's expertise <laughs> yeah. is very similar you do sacrifice a creature but you're also gaining that life mm-hmm. and i think that in that way it's not as green friendly but green has just incidentally sometimes random eight eights running around yeah um so if you're okay losing that creature or it could be post combat you're doing it as well right so there's lots of flexibility here i think just having this in your deck is great insurance policy yeah, I I like this a lot. It's going to go in very specific decks, but in those decks, it's going to feel uh, incredible. Yeah. Call uh, the Wild Speaker decks, want this kind of stuff. And again, 
when you draw seven cards and gain seven life, sometimes that can put you so far out of reach of what people are trying to do as well. Mm -hmm. I never discount life gain in Commander anymore, so I love seeing this on the green card. Yeah, and you don't have to sacrifice something huge, right? Yeah. If you sack a 4-4, four, four, if you sack like a beast off of a off of a mm -hmm. rampaging bay loss or something. Six mana, draw four. That's great. Yeah. You take that sometimes, yeah. you know? Um, so I think the limitation is can you cast it? If you can't reliably cast it, don't put this in your deck. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to put this in my Sidisi deck. It's three colors. It's not. We're basing the ranking off of the castability exactly. first. So, um, so what'd you give I, it? I like it as a B. If Me the too. Wants it, it's great. It's a B. All okay. right. Okay. That's it. Those are the 20. Um, there's some incredible magic cards in this list. Um, and I wanted to talk about it because uh, they printed 30 of these. In, in Zendikar, Zendikar Rising. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think I would call three to four of them absolute staples where I would put them in basically any deck that has those colors. That can and can play it because you have like yes. Seagate Restoration on here and that is similar to Disciple of Freilies and requires a lot of blue pips. Yeah, but even that I'll put in most blue, like mm. two color blue yeah. decks. Yeah, um, just not three, I think. Those I would call like basically anything. Yeah. Balligate Recovery, Malakir Rebirth, Valka the Waiting, Seagate Restoration, I think. Yeah, but that's the thing is there's 10 more that I also play. Yeah. Right? Like Shatter Skull Smashing. Shatter Skull Smashing, that's uh, I play Sajiri Shelter, Shelter in a very yeah. aggressive deck. And I play Hagra Mauling in a big mana deck. And, you, like, you just... Right, right, right. Like, I play tons of these. Yeah, they feel so easy to slot into a deck when you're building them. If you want a way to power up your deck, but not, you know, shooting it from a, you know, from more casual to kind of, oh, that's not cool, that's a mana crypt. Mm -hmm. I think this is a great card... Anytime you're looking at a deck and you're going, I haven't upgraded this in a while. I don't want to think about cards to cut. How about just a land for an MDFC? Yeah. Such an easy thing to do, and it's going to make the game experience better without really sacrificing almost anything, especially with these lands that come in untapped if you pay through life. Yeah. What I like about MDFCs is they really crunch down. They up all of your numbers, right? They up yeah. your land count. They up your draw count. They up your like removal count, obviously, depending on which spell you put in. At the same time, so they just make your deck work better because yeah. these cards operate on multiple axes. There are two cards in one. That's uh, amazing. <laughs> A BOGO deal. We love those. Yeah, and Commander players, you're going to love this. You're going to love MDFCs in general. I think a lot of these are staples. It's a yeah. wave of staples. And if they're not staples, they're like what you said. You're going to find a spot for some. I'm sure as we did this episode, you're probably like, oh my gosh, X card the next deck. Mm -hmm. I got to do that. Yeah. There's some incredible stuff that you can do with these cards. I honestly think save every single one that you open, even the ones that we gave Ds, what if you build a deck down the road? Yeah. That suddenly it opens your McKinney Stampede. You we know? don't know when these kinds of cards are going to be reprinted as well. They're not easy reprints, I would say. Every time there's a card that has a front and a back, it is more difficult for them to reprint because yeah. they like they don't often print double-sided cards in pre-cons yeah. because yeah, yeah, that yeah. changes the printing process. And how they put the, the whole package together as well. Right. So, and they're also really powerful if it's going to go into another format, if it's mm -hmm. going to uh, be in draft and all that stuff. So it affects a lot of different levers. So I think they are great investments and definitely something that I'm going to be buying a lot of. Here's a question. Yeah. Which of these are you most excited to play? What are you slamming into decks? We obviously gave a few cards an S here. Yeah. Um, I don't want to talk about those because Fell the Profane, yeah, goes into pretty much everything. Yeah. I think the ones I'm excited for Witch Enchanter, which yeah. is an S. Yeah. In my, and uh, probably like Waterlog Teachings. Waterlog Teachings is sweet. I don't I, run a lot of tutors, but it's fun having I, one that like yeah. feels kind of... I've been taking tutors out of my deck, and so it's nice yeah. to actually feel comfortable putting one back in that feels like it, it mm. works at the rate that it's going for. And of course, it has to be a deck that's built around it, but I'm in. I'm in for it. I think, I mean, I, I'm very excited about Legion Lo Leadership, the Boros one. Yeah, um, or the Plus One Plus and Indestructible Golgari one, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, that one's great. I mean, Revitalizing the, Repast. I love combat tricks, yeah. and they're really, really hard to justify making space for in your deck because oh, yeah, they're totally. so narrow. So the fact that they're attached to lands means that like when they're in my hand, I'm not like mad at past deck builder Rachel, yeah. who loves having like a gotcha, oh, I caught you not blocking, uh -huh, moment, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know? Uh, so yeah, I think any time that. that I can justify putting a more narrow effect that has a big blowout potential into a deck, I'm really excited to run it. Um, that being said, I'm excited about Razor Grass Ambush as well. I'm hoping I'm it hoping feels good, good in my hand. Yeah, I, I hope so too. If not, it'll feel pretty good as a land on the battlefield. That's you know? true. 
That's true. You always have a land in these spells. All right. To the listeners, you know what it is. Which of these MDFCs are you putting into your decks? Are there any that we are not uh, judging correctly that you think you have a better approximation for? And if so, tell us why. Uh, mm-hmm. And also, do you think these are better than the Zendikar MDFCs? Do you think MDFCs are, in general, good or a bad thing for magic? Let us know in the comments your opinions. I love that are question. All welcome. Are they a good or a bad thing? I saw somebody online talking about how there's a, now a category in their deck where people can cons- he will consider cards both lands and spells Mm -hmm. so he's like I'll have 26 dedicated lands I'll have the like 50 dedicated spells and this Uh, is like flex spots okay flex I like that so there's like and those are your channel lands those are your dual land the the MDFCs and modal spells kind of too like bushwhack I would consider is like functionally a tapped land and a fight spell Mm. like there's a lot of this modality wizards has been doing it a lot lately Uh, so keep an eye out for it and uh, pick some of them up Go over to cardkingdom.com slash command. You can support the show and buy all of these sweet new cards. Genuinely, one of the best things I did when Zendikar Rising came out was just buy a bunch of them. Yeah. Just buy a bunch of Balaged, Balaged Recovery. And you never have to worry about if it. If you're into that, and then you just have them in your box yeah. for when you're building a green deck down the line. Uh, if there's any that you're excited about, just right now, not right now, wait until their de- the prices droop a little bit. A lot of this product is going to get opened. People are love Modern Horizon sets. Yep. Keep an eye on Card Kingdom and then you can buy them all in one place and get them shipped safely and quickly to your door. I love shopping at Card Kingdom because I know that the cards that I order online are the ones that are going to show up on my doorstep in that condition, in the proper printing. It's the easiest way for me to build a budget yeah. deck of just like, this is heavily played, it's janky, but it's fun. This is this version that no one yeah. wants. Like, I love that they just have a ton of cards that are all all in one place and when i'm building a deck i don't want to wait for envelopes to come through the mail yeah or so, get lost envelopes card kingdom.com slash command and when you get those cards leave them up keep them protected ultrapro.com slash command they have their brand new magic eight uh series that has out check it out they have products across the entire lineup here so no matter what you're looking for if you want to theme out something and you love the colors of magic well guess what this collection is here for you if you've been waiting to try out those apex sleeves this is a great chance to jump in on that if you've been looking to expand your binder collection even if it's just one at a time or deck boxes check it out the Magic 8 collection is brand new on ultrapro.com slash command and there's also do we mentioned tons of other stuff there that you might want for your collection uh, and of course you might need a new binder just for your MDFCs that sounds like a great idea it's Mana 8 so if you're googling it it's Mana 8 <laughs> Mana 8 the number <laughs> not 8 not Magic 8 not Magic 8 so uh, sorry that's okay Magic 8 Ball Magic 8 Ball it's uh, a black yeah and it's all white <laughs> I love it okay uh, man, we'll also have a uh, link to Mana 8 products in the show notes so go check that out no no way, really? Yeah, we're gonna. There's have also them. a link to episode 352 where we talk about MDFCs. So don't forget that. Yeah, if you want all the cool rules and interactions, blinking lands to have creatures come into play. Whoa! You could play a Simic land, blink it, and then have a seven six. Oh. I'm in for it. Sweet. All right. <laughs> Clips up. Big thanks to our amazing team here at the Command Zone. We got Damon Lenz, Eric Lem, Megan Yep, Garov Goliath, Jordan Pridgen, Jamie Block, Arthur Mellocraft, Manson Lung, Josh, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Sam Waldo, Evan Limburger, Katie Cole, Mitch Trafford, and Josh Lee Kawhi. Thanks for watching, everybody. We hope you have a modal, dual-faced, cool day. I don't know how that works. I hope you have a dual-faced day. I hope you have a, yeah. A, 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 no, that is not good. That's not good. It sounds like some Batman villainy. <laughs> I have, hope you have a double day. Ah-ha-ha. Uh, ha. Wait, double day? Hmm? Uh, I'm okay with the current length of the current day. Are you having a land or a spell day, John? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly not enough land days. <laughs> For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs> <laughs>